Space flight is hard, right? The joke is it ain't rocket science, well, it is. So NASA is an interesting place. It has very smart people. While uh, we do great work here, you kind of get in a bubble. We don't have the time or the resources to have one expert know everything there is. There's too much stuff to know. You need fresh eyes sometimes. The generic question that we're always after, is there a better way to do X? Is something that we constantly strive for at NASA. Center of Excellence for Collaborative Innovation works not only within NASA, but we actually work across the entire federal government uh, as a center of excellence to help other federal agencies understand challenges, understand crowdsourcing, and to provide a low barrier of entry. So we have the contracts with the companies that do that, and so we can do interagency agreements that allow them to leverage this. When we were asked by the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy if we would be willing to stand this up, it was really at a time where we were ahead of the game in terms of using crowdsourcing as a mechanism to accelerate our access to new ideas and technology. COSI's job right now is to really take this methodology and turn it into something that becomes part of standard practice. COSI is a really great resource that we can leverage that makes it easier for us to do our jobs because NASA has the expertise built up, we can tap into that. When we came into this using the NTL, uh, my team at least saw it as an experiment. It was the first time we've ever used the crowd to do project development. And what we saw really surprised us. The results that came back, the ideas were really, really good. And it was a new concept for us. At CMS, we had not done this before. So for us, this was like eye-opening to see how this could be done. Jason then thought, well, perhaps this whole idea of crowdsourcing could be applied to software development, to algorithm development, to IT type activities, not just to R&D specific activities. And so he, with Kareem and Harvard, launched the NASA Tournament Lab. So my research is on how crowds can be used to solve tough innovation problems. Almost all of the projects we have done and the variety of projects that we've done, we have surpassed our own internal benchmarks and expectations. For any given problem that we run, on our platforms. We just get many more shots on goal. Hundreds, if not thousands of people participate in creating solutions for us. So statistically, we're just gonna get a, a, a way better solution because the odds increase as more and more people participate. Secondly, uh, the community itself is such that we have elite programmers from around the world participating. There were some questions that we could not figure out and they had answers to everything. People developing algorithms, when, when we open it up to the crowd, you don't get just one result that's really high. You get 42 results that all use different approaches. NASA has so many cool activities right now, and we really are changing the model a little bit of how we do business, yet we still have these incredible goals of getting to Mars someday, of figuring out how we protect the Earth from asteroids. That's a hard thing to do, but one of the key components there is monitoring all of the asteroids we have. That's where Asteroid Tracker comes in. What Congress has asked us to do as an agency is to find and track these things so we at least know the problem we're facing. It really becomes very hard because of all the possible combinations. If you have 100 dishes, you can ask how many ways can I put them together? Think about how many ways you could deal with just 52 cards in a deck. I guess it'd be very, very tough. Um, and so that's one of the cases that there wasn't a clear-cut solution to it. And so we asked the community, started formulating those problems, uh, what became our Asteroid Tracker Challenge, and it became actually part of NASA's Asteroid Grand Challenge approach through the Tournament Lab. Within NASA, we've done things like determining the right amount of medical uh, supplies to be sent up on a, on a long-term space mission. We've done things like building uh, a, an app that helps uh, astronauts in space keep track of their, uh, of their food intake. Strawberry shortcake. We oh. have these butter cookies and some strawberries with a little bit of milk on them. That's actually where we, why we developed this app, to, to come up with research quality data to know exactly what astronauts are eating during space flight. Going in, I was thinking it would be one contest, you know, start to finish, but no, that's, that's not how it happened what, at all. It was more like 25 con separate contests. We broke it up into so many little pieces that the best folks from each of those 25 areas, they're the ones that solved each one of those steps. And it all happened much faster than we ever would have done it on our own. <laughs> 
There are several ways to enter foods, and I'll just show you those. There's a checkbox where it brings up all ISS food, International Space Station foods. Um, you check a few foods, you add that to consumption. Crowdsourcing has let us tackle problems that maybe we didn't have time to tackle. There is a whole lot of different things that Robonaut can do. Uh, it's just a matter of getting the time to make him do it. The idea is, is that eventually we will um, reduce the crew time needed to do mundane tasks in the space station or intravehicular activities with a new robot, a Robonaut 3 even, um, to be able to do the, the dangerous tasks that are easy to do, but we don't necessarily want the astronauts doing that. It would have been nice to have a Robonaut that we could basically command to go inspect and then have the astronauts come in afterwards and fix the problems once they had a good grasp of what the problem even was. One of the things that we're using crowdsourcing for is vision. On Earth, we kind of have control over the lighting conditions. We can get a get a lot of data to understand. In space we have a limited time, we have limited data we can get, and we don't have any control over the lighting, and so it's a very difficult problem. Uh, we've done things for the space station where in fact we can optimize the, the positioning of the solar arrays that the that NASA has to maximize power output. Uh, we're helping build out the space internet. We've got the distance involved. You know, Earth to the moon is on the order of about a quarter of a second. Earth to Mars can be 20 minutes time just at light speed for a signal to leave Earth and get to Mars. So these huge delays, the internet protocols, the networking protocols were designed here for Earth, assume you're richly connected, short delays, doesn't work in space. So we have the same problems of communicating with crews, whether it's email, video conferencing, voice, telemetry from the spacecraft that tells us the health of the vehicle, health of the crew, whether it's commanding spacecraft, whether it's getting back the science information. Right? We have to move the same kind of information that you do here on Earth but we have to do it with these delays and this disconnectedness. But it's important engineering. And so we asked the crowd to do that for us and see, you know, really show their skills there. They did very well. By going out and asking a crowd for a solution, we got a lot back very quickly. We were very surprised, frankly, by how fast the responses came and the pace of working with the crowd. As far as when we can apply it, I don't think we've found anywhere near the limit of when we can actually use it. Um, and it's all a factor of how do you, how do you look at the problem you have, how do you deconstruct that problem? And then how do you actually engage an external community in solving those pieces? For COSI, it's considered a success when an agency like USAID, as an example, went after their experience with us, they proved, it proved to them, this is something we want to go do ourselves. We created this atrocity prevention tech challenge a couple of years ago um, that was a constructed, a compo composed a sequence of five sub challenges that tried to address different aspects of atrocity prevention. And so we had been working with the NASA Center of Excellence for Collaborative Innovation um, on the prior four, and then ended up working with the NTL specifically on this fifth ch challenge, which is very much focused on data use. We went to NTL uh, because we didn't really necessarily have the data expertise in-house to be able to construct this sort of competition. We had already written this down and said, this is the way that we want to structure this contest. They said, great, that doesn't make sense. And so we said, okay, great, let's go back and forth about how to turn this into something that the actual competitors and scientists would be able to consume and respond to. As far as crowdsourcing, open innovation, prize competitions, the use of incentives to uh, bring additional minds to the problems that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, this just reinforced that uh, there are so many different ways that we can try to use it and that it can be effective and additive to our work. And so they were very helpful in terms of iterating through that process. We, we were running challenges with uh, the Environmental Protection Agency, with the Department of Energy. We've done um, some with uh, Medicare Medicaid services. I worked on the Provider Enrollment Screening Project uh, when it was first introduced from inception on. One of the major 
purposes of this project was not only just to create a, a technology solution, but it was really to change a mindset. Uh, we wanted to go out there and instead of building something 50 different ways for 50 individual states, we really wanted to put together sort of a, a set of solutions that could be leveraged across the nation. After talking with the NASA folks, you know, they met all of our basic requirements. So they really were out there. They had already done a lot of the leg work, foot work, you know, set the base foundation for things. And it just was an absolutely perfect fit for us. Uh, to work with them on this particular project, leverage what they've already done, uh, and more importantly, leverage the environment uh, and the practices and processes that they had already put in place that had already shown great benefit and already great value. The talent level that we uh, engaged with was um, superior. Again, you're talking about this isn't anybody's full-time job, so the commitment to solving problems when I needed them solved within a 24-hour period was uh, incredible. Once we got this in place and once we understood how it worked, cycling through the various contests and how rapidly we did it, we were very pleased with the results. We were very pleased with the cost effectiveness of it. So I think other agencies are starting to accelerate their use. They've seen too many successes within the government. But I think for those agencies that are still unclear about how to use it, what's the importance of it, how do you craft your challenges, I would encourage them to come use the expertise that we've gathered from our own experience and from supporting other agencies, the agencies like Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, USAID, EPA, Department of Energy. I think the big challenge now for most firms is to change their internal processes so that they can think of the crowd as a partner. And I think our results now across a range of problems have proven out that this can work, uh, this does work, but it's about the process, getting your staff, getting your engineers excited about the fact that now all of a sudden the entire world becomes their lab. Crowdsourcing, you're gonna get a lot more creativity, a lot more innovation, and it, you're gonna get different solutions you never would have dreamed of. They do this, they live for this. What organization wouldn't wanna take advantage of the potential opportunity to access new ideas, new technology for less money, for less time? Who wouldn't wanna take advantage of that? And that is the potential that crowdsourcing brings to us.